folks, I'm going to be talking about up tilt, camera up tilt today. And since we have a premier example of extreme camera up tilt in Maddie Stunts, I thought I would make a sensational title of the video uh, and get a lot of people interested. Ah, uh, okay, it's a cheap trick, but what, what? I'm only human, okay? Maddie Stunts' secret is that he's an awesome, awesome pilot, okay? But there is something about Maddie Stunts' setup that contributes to the mind-bending effect that his videos have. And the component, I think, of Matty Stunt's setup that makes his copter so unexpected to so many people is that he flies with like 60 degrees of up tilt. And most of us are flying with, let's say, less than 45 degrees of up tilt. Now, I pick 45 degrees there uh, for a very specific reason, and that is, as you may know, when you add up tilt to the camera, it changes how you use roll and yaw to turn the copter. The more up tilt the camera has, the more pitched forward the copter is, the more roll you use to turn the copter and the less yaw you use. If you take a very extreme example where the copter is pitched forward 90 degrees uh, and the camera is then up tilted 90 degrees, so it's looking, basically the camera is aligned with the motors, you can see in that case that roll and yaw would be completely transposed. The roll input on the stick would cause the copter to yaw from the camera's perspective, and the yaw input from the stick would cause the copter to roll from the camera's perspective. If that doesn't make sense, do you play with your copter, you know, in the living room, turn it around, look at it, figure it out. Uh, and so 45 degrees is the point where that transition starts to happen, where roll is inputting more yaw than roll, and where yaw is inputting more roll than yaw. Okay, below 45 degrees, roll is still mostly roll from the camera's perspective, and yaw is still mostly yaw. So I, I think that many people are haven't thought to go above 45 degrees. Number one, just because you go super fast when that starts happening. And number two, because once you get above 45 degrees, you really have to reshape your brain around how the copter flies. Whereas below 45 degrees, it kind of feels more like an adjustment, but it still kind of feels like it flies normal. To start talking about up tilt, we'll just do the basics. And that is that if you've got a copter like this, thrust comes out the bottom of the copter. And so if you want to go fast, you up tilt the camera so that when you pitch forward to go fast, you're not staring at the ground, you're looking forward. And since it's natural for us to put the horizon at roughly, you know, midline, maybe a little less than midline, then we're going to tend to go faster when we have more up tilt because the more up tilt there is, the further forward the copter will be pitched when the camera is level and the horizon is in frame. Okay, that's the basics of up tilt, and that's basically why I say more up tilt equals more speed equals more awesome. One of the things that up tilt does is it changes the relative magnitude of the vertical and horizontal thrust vectors. So we can see here is a copter with a little bit of up tilt. And by the way, both of these copters have exactly the same magnitude of thrust coming out of them. But this copter has far more vertical and far less horizontal, whereas the copter with more up tilt has more horizontal and less vertical, where that's 45 degrees, so that's equal amounts of horizontal and vertical. And what this means is that when you raise the throttle on this copter, it will tend to pop up and not go very much faster. And when you raise the throttle on this copter, it will tend to go forward and not pop up as much. And in fact, in this case, the copter will tend to go forward about as much as it goes up. In general, the more up tilt you have, the faster you go when you raise the throttle, and the less you tend to pop up. Uh, and that's good, of course, if you're, what you want is to go fast. It does mean, though, that it, it changes the equation a little bit for acro flight, or if you've got a race course where you need to climb over an obstacle or through a raised up air gate or something like that, it does mean that if you're going very fast forward, you may need to pitch back some in order to get the vertical component of thrust enough to lift you. And that's something you get used to as you, as you fly with it more often. But this was really unexpected to me when I started raising my up tilt to more extreme levels, like 40, 45 degrees you do a split S and as you're coming out of the split S, you raise the throttle and instead of the copter arresting its descent, it just sort of pushes forward into the tree. And if you're not really careful, you do a lot of those split S's where you go over the top of the tree and you just right to the ground on the other side because you didn't have as much vertical thrust as you expected to. And instead it just pushed you straight forward. 
There's another unexpected aspect of up tilt that I discovered as I moved to more and more up tilt. I'm at about 45 degrees, 40, 43 degrees, something, I don't know exactly. And that is that the more up tilt you have, the more confident you can be in acrobatic moves. And the reason for that is that acrobatic moves are usually pitching up. Because of that, when we have no up tilt in our camera, so here, here are four copters oriented in a loop, right? The thrust is perpendicular to the circle, as it must be, and the camera is looking forward with no up tilt. And you can see that in this case, the camera is looking out of the loop. So if there's a tree or an obstacle over here, you are not going to see it coming with very much advance notice, and you will feel timid and not as confident. On the other hand, with 45 degrees up tilt, notice that, again, the thrust is aligned perpendicular to the arc. Notice that the camera is looking into the move, and so you have much more lead time to see what's coming as you're doing the move. And if you watch my recent video, Gravity is No Impediment, nothing changed about my piloting except the fact that I had more up tilt. And suddenly when I started doing these loops, instead of doing them blind, I could see what was coming. And I felt very confident that if I was about to hit a tree, I would just turn out of the move and, and go to go somewhere else, right? And that is a really unexpected effect of up tilt uh, that, that I, I just didn't see coming. And it's, it's really huge. The ability to do these acro moves, it feels like they're impossible because pilots who don't have enough up tilt would have to do these moves blind. And so they don't do them or they, they do them very rarely. But as you add this up tilt, it becomes, you're just flying at some point. And you're pitching back and you're just watching the tree coast under you until finally you get to the point right where where you, you have to cut the motors and coast over it but again because you're looking into the move you can see the obstacle coming if you've misjudged the loop and you're about to fall into the tree you'll see it happening and you'll be able to flip over and fly out of it hopefully and not not have a problem whereas with this one if i haven't got enough vertical velocity and i'm at this point in the loop i'm not going to see the tree coming it's going to come up from here and smack me in the head I can't look down until I'm all, I'm not looking down until I'm already through the move. I'm well through the move. Okay. So there's a very different feel when you've got no up tilt to these acro moves. Now it is true that this up tilt would make it much, much harder to do acro moves where the copter was pitching forward instead of pitching backward, but we don't often do those. So this is another effect uh, of, of up tilt. Now let's take a look at the way up tilt interacts with some of the acro moves that you see in Maddie Stunt's videos. And you also see some of these moves, like I've seen this move that I'm going to talk about in some of the videos that uh, Mr. Steele and the Atlanta guys did over at, uh, you know, Club International, whatever that abandoned hotel building is that they fly at. I've seen them do this move uh, in some of their videos. One of the effects of this up tilt is that if I hover in front of an obstacle and fly straight up, it will look like the cam the camera will be looking up at the obstacle and it'll look like the copter is flying parallel to the obstacle somewhat but it's not so if i actually drop out of here let me just let me just make it it'll feel like the copter is like this and going like this and on some level my pilot's brain says why is the copter not flying away from the wall but actually the copter is like this and it's just going straight up, okay? So that's one of the ways that this, and by the way, this is now like 60 degrees up tilt. It's not 45 degrees. So this is kind of what Maddie Stunts is working with. So that's one of the ways in which the up tilt can sort of decouple what you think the copter is doing from what it's really doing. And one of the reasons why Maddie Stunts videos are so sort of confusing and disorienting, I think, especially to pilots. If we look at a move, so this is a similar to a move that like he's doing underneath the highway in some of his recent videos where he flips inverted and he's sort of coasting up underneath the highway here. Here we are at the bottom of the move. The copter is actually hovering flat as it enters the move and the camera is looking up. And you can see that as the copter climbs, look what the camera is doing and look at how far into the move you are before you hit the point where you must kill your throttle right here to avoid pushing downwards. You have positive thrust pushing you upwards well into the move. You see that? To this point, you're still 
you're coasting on that vertical velocity right here and pushing yourself forward. And it's only when you actually get like to here that you actually start to push negative and have to kill your motors. So you have thrust much further into the move than it feels like you ought to. And that's, I, th I think, and I don't claim to know any secrets here, but this is just my opinion. I think that's why some of Maddie Stunt's moves look like he has 3D. Because your brain is telling you that by the time the camera is pointing here, his motors must be upside down. He must be inverted. But he's not inverted yet. You see? It feels like he must be, but because of his extreme camera angle, he's not. Okay. Let's take a look at this video. I'd like to show you some examples of that. Here's, here's an example of the move, like I was showing you, where he goes straight up the wall. And it feels like the copter must be pitched backward, but actually it's not. Watch this. Now see right here, it feels to you and me like he pitched back, but he didn't. He just leveled out. Watch it again. Right there. He is actually hovering flat now. He is not pitched back. And now he goes straight up the wall there. And that's just hovering and going up. It's just a, that's just a punch out. At this point... His copter, I'm thinking, is probably actually 90 degrees to the ground. It feels like he must be upside down. And you say to yourself, how is he How is he hovering? In fact, he may not be quite 90 degrees to the ground yet. He may actually not. He may actually be like right here. And do you see that right here, he still has vertical thrust. He can still push upwards a little bit, right? And that, I think, is what contributes to the, well, he did a flip there, what contributes to the way he sort of floats and hangs in the air. Okay, so, up tilt. Up tilt and Matty Stunts. This, these are my thoughts, uh, breaking it down. Uh, as you're watching Matty Stunts' video, I, I encourage you to get out a quadcopter frame, get your copter out, and, like, put a pencil on it or put your finger on it or something at 60 degrees up tilt. And then work backwards. Look at his camera angle and say to yourself, where is his camera pointing? And then put your copter 60 degrees to that and look at where his copter actually is. And it will not be where your mind expects it to be because you're just not used to so much extreme up tilt. And that'll help you sort of break down what's going on here. Or if you really want to be a rock star, just put your camera at 60 degrees up tilt, cross your fingers and go for it. Because that's pretty much, I think, what he did. And uh, and what you can all see, it's amazing. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I think most of us will crash very, very quickly if we do that. So eh, maybe in an open field. Alrighty. Hope that's helpful. Happy flying.